about navigation too, right? Yeah. It's about how to get, I mean, how to get to the right place by the right path. And That's right. People who've done it have that skill, which is the navigational skill. You know, a lot of the time, that is the difference between the game and the game. John, do you have any? You know, well, I think I would just be piling on to what they both said okay. about the people. Then move on. Fair enough, man. That was my lead. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Remember, I don't, I don't get caught speechless earlier, too much. I told you guys, if you guys are all going to sit there and be nice to yeah, each other, okay. this will be Fair so enough. boring. Right. So, <laughs> my cold medicine just wore off. Really. <laughs> okay, let me um, start then. So, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I'm only going to take so much of this, right? Uh, so anyway, I won't pile on. I'll have my original thought now, which is a difficult one. Um, as I'm sitting here, I, I've never met uh, this man before, but I, I know his reputation. I've seen the deals uh, that he's been doing lately, and I know some of the investors that are involved in his, uh, his company. And I can tell you that, especially after listening to him now, he can pitch. Right? I imagine you can take this guy to any business plan competition in the world and, and win. Um, and that's what we are all really terrible at here in South Florida. Right? In my experience, and I'll only speak for myself, the entrepreneurs that I work with and the, the VCs that I talk to, I'm not a big believer in VC capital, but um, they come down here and they're just terribly disappointed. You don't know how to talk to them. Right? You don't know how to prepare your business plan. You don't know how to put together a proper set of documents. You don't know how to get in front of the room and win and get their confidence so they will invest in you versus just the spreadsheets that you've put together. And for me, that's something that has to change if we want guys like this to stay in Florida and make 15 investments a year instead of one every couple of years. Um, if he comes back and makes more deals because you guys have improved your game, everyone else will follow him, right? Greed is good. And the big problem that I see is we just don't work on our own skills, right? Any of you entrepreneurs want to challenge this guy in today's competition, you will lose, right? <laughs> Use him as a role model and try and get better. You know, John, I, 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 I love the well, point. And that was a very original. <laughs> articulate your business to them. So I think he, this panel can form, John, what you're suggesting, you know, something that will help you to bring your business plan, like later on you're going to do that, although I know we only got two minutes for each, and, uh, and really go through that exercise. I think it will be super helpful because a lot of time it's just a matter of can you articulate it the way that they can give you. What happens is that we have, uh, every VC has so much deal flow to deal with. Yeah. Yes. So you need to come with something very, very simple and something that yes. the investment manager, investment professional understands. He can make some changes. He can then explain to his investment committee or his investment committee. And we at the investment committee, again, we don't have time to, to, to make a big effort to understand uh, so there is a there is a model the, the Silicon Valley model whatever you want to call it and it is very important to do that and then we have two more things yes original uh, one thing. is original thing <laughs> one is the advantage of Florida also vis-a-vis -vis the Silicon Valley today Silicon Valley is becoming very expensive it's the, the prices are very com very competitive and the uh, firms like us also sometimes we appreciate going outside of that area because we find that the deals are, are more affordable, that there is less competition. In your case, you didn't reach out to everybody, but uh, you could have and made it probably a little bit more competitive, but... Uh, but uh, I think you guys would tell you it was pretty 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't like the price that yeah. much. And then the second thing is that, uh, and I think that you wanted to address that issue as well, is in Miami and Florida is a central point between Latin America and the U.S., and what's going on in Latin America is, is unbelievable. So I think that Florida has to figure out still what, how to capitalize on that. And even myself, I, I, don't, I don't have it clear how to do it, but there is something to, a uh, role to play, and uh, it's something that would be worth uh, thinking about. It. Appreciate that, and of course, Marvel earlier was trying to tell me how hardworking the entrepreneurial here, and I think it's a really important point because people down south from Latin America are waking up to this. They're saying, "Hey, wait a minute! You know, we we got a huge market here in Brazil. You know, how come we're importing all these <coughs> technology? Let's have our own ecosystem, build our own technology." They're chasing you. I mean, you're way above the sophistication and you know the ecosystem. So it's, it's a good battle to fight. I mean, number one um, channel to the, to the Latin American market is right here. So I actually want to give you guys a chance to ask uh, what is on your mind, anything that we did not cover, you know, in support of you is why they're here. So if you have something, I mean, just like when Overshaw in Silicon Valley, my value add to him is like, if you're just making call, you could not get in front of these VCs. We, IBM, are helping you by putting you in front of these top-tier VCs that you can get. So take your chance here. Uh, Go for it. Why is it that VCs do not sign non-disclosure agreements? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they They've there. already seen your deal, <laughs> and they don't want you to accuse them of taking their idea. There's something called it's contamination. Not it never works. That we, they don't? I mean, I don't. Uh, yeah, this is, this is so much stuff. They don't want to be prevented. And suddenly, they've seen your business model, and then if they have signed it later, then, and they find another company, they, they don't want to be precluded from doing that. Intel is a little, a little bit different, and probably a lot of the corporate investors. Every time we receive something confidential from anyone, we send our, our NDA, and we sign it. But in the VC community, there is too much uh, the idea, information, right. people, I mean, you are talking to someone, although right. in theory is a confidential information, it's, that night that person may be talking over drinks to another VC and yeah. telling him mm -hmm. about your story. So, so it flows like that, but at the same time, it's not, it's not really that dangerous. No. no. It really hasn't been an issue. Mm -hmm. All right, next question, here. What's the typical time frame, and it might vary by industry, but from pitch to underwriting to deal closure for a VC transaction? Mm -hmm. Quality of your preparation, buddy. It depends. Yeah. It also depends. Are you in Miami or are you in the Valley? Yeah. Miami. Yeah. I, I allocated six months, okay. and it took six months and two weeks to close the deal. Whoa. Um, Very you know, and it ended up being, it almost ended up looking like two deals because of the two investors. It, it really... Yeah could have closed a little earlier. But I would plan on, <coughs> you know, and I've done this before, so it, it's it's hard. It could take longer, it could take a year. But, um, and it's a process. I, I, I wouldn't think of it as an event. I was talking to VCs, VCs would call us uh, when we had millions of dollars in the bank and I always took their calls. I always talked to them, I always built relationships. Uh, I was at Smart Camp saying, we don't need money. <laughs> they love that. <laughs> Because we didn't, we had just closed a five million dollar round. We didn't start soliciting the venture round until six months after Smart Camp, and probably nine months ahead of the need for capital. I think all these people we have time would tell you that you know going after money blindly is not the right approach, right? I mean, you you really need to time that one well too, and. Make sure it's the right people. I think that there is a lot of strategy in terms of that. It's not only your presentation, is who do you go first, yes. who introduces you to that yes. person or not, and it can go very fast. I mean, we also sense when there is competition and there is something that looks like interesting, and also depending on who we, who we hear that is after you, then we get uh, more excited or, or more we. <laughs> and it depends also, like in organization, there are. There are some people who are very fast. There are other people who are slower. They, they are more analytical. They, do, they want to do, you know, multiple checking. So it it varies so much, and there is no substitute for you to to plan it, to do your own due diligence. Mm -hmm. 
Um, there are deals like uh, some business now are going, for example, in Brazil, where we have been many years, and they've been there, uh, they are flown, flown from Silicon Valley, and in, in a week, and in Turkey also, they've gone for a week, they, they've signed term sheets and flown back. You know, your partner Dave Thomas was a mentor at my Smart Team Rio. Oh, really? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he found two companies. Back there? Yeah, uh, just following on from that point, can you guys speak a little bit about the balancing the synergy? Like, always uh, you know, take capital when it presents itself, always uh, balancing that with uh, the risk of dilution and your thoughts on, on that? Because it sounds like you've had multiple rounds of, of that. Yeah, so um, in, in, I'll give you a, a, an anecdote about, about that thought process. Um, you know, I had done a pretty good job of cons preserving equity for myself through two rounds of angel capital, which I was able to do in common stock and just very plain vanilla at valuation increases and so forth. But I saw that in earlier this year, I said to myself, you know, I like the market for venture money right now. Um, I looked at other companies that have been successful in cloud computing and I looked at how their financing roadmap, what they call, you know, the fuel stops, how those looked and how much money they had taken. And, and everybody in that kind of you know, benchmark went through the same thought process. And I said to myself, you know, really, am I doing myself and the investors a disservice by preserving equity but lengthening the, 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 uh, ro you know, the kind of the runway to exit um, where people get liquid and get a return on their investment do I end up running a lifestyle company, you know, which is only good for me, it's not good for the investors, or is it better to play some bets, take some dilution and be a kind of a smaller fish in a, in a bigger pond? And, you know, for me, the answer was easy. I talked to the board and everyone pretty much agreed. And then it was a function of how much you think you're going to get for valuation and nah, that's not, that's not possible. And, and, and where do you want to go Silicon Valley for the money? And then, you know, okay, <laughs> let's go, let's try. And, uh, and the, you know, the rest is kind of history. We got it done. But um, it's, very, it's a very tricky thing. And valuing the company is a very, very tricky thing. And it really is an art form more than it is a, a science. And, and the only way to get there is to build tension. Because if you go talk to one investor, they own you. Unfortunately, you got to talk to a bunch of them. And, and, and that process will take the CEO. Of, it'll be a full-time job for some period of time. The common misconception is thinking about your value if you're holding in a company in terms of a percentage, right? right? I have 50% and now I only have 40. Well, you don't make your car payment in a percentage, right? You have 100 shares. If they're worth a buck, they're worth $100. If you issue 500 more but now yours are worth $2 million, who's been diluted? You know, I can show you the math that shows the newest money in is the most diluted, right? So don't think about it that way. Think about making your ownership more valuable as opposed to exactly what percentage of the cap chart that you have control of. In our business, uh, we also have A and B shares. A's vote, B's don't, right? So I don't have to worry about you know raising capital and doing my control, which for me is the most important thing, right? He's got very high quality investors, right? Having this guy, an MVP, write him a check, raises his valuation because everybody knows he's pretty good because the MVP doesn't make silly bets. Right, so don't think about the percentage. Think about the dollar value. So that that was Maria's <coughs> point, right? Think about who you want. Right? Yeah. Be very careful because you know we're we're actually LPing eighty-seven venture fund, and I can tell you, <laughs> you pick very careful. Oh no, that's How much that's everything. You want, that's everything. You know, yeah. who, whose network is more extensive than other? I mean, all that is a much more important question than just the financial. Yeah, and if, and if I could just add to that, it's such an important point. You know, Jeff Bezos says that entrepreneurship is all about eliminating risk every day, right? And I think most people don't think of it that way, but it's an incredible insight. And so, like, one of the things that, that I thought about in, in doing this is, you know, if I get the best investors, how much risk am I taking off the table? Because they have the staying power to continue investing. Um, if you need it, you know, hopefully we don't need it, but, but chances are we probably will either need it or want it because it'll be, a, you know, on the good side, there'll be a bigger opportunity to chase and, and having the investors that we have, they'll, they'll be ready to stroke a check without six months of work the next time. And 
their insight and their contacts. I just came back from the Intel CEO summit mm -hmm. um, that I was there for two days in, in California, <coughs> and there were, you know, Amazing. Intel's portfolio companies. Yeah. There was hundreds of CEOs there for us to network with and figure out how we do business with. There's the best minds in technology there. Um, so the networking opportunity, the access to, to, to their portfolio companies and the best thinking in the world is much more valuable than the money. Absolutely. That's, that's, that actually, well Intel is a pioneer in doing that, trying to really bring the portfolio CEO as an ecosystem mm -hmm. and make those connections a valuable connection. I mean, yep. it's just, I mean, we have the same. I mean, if you really don't believe in what you're doing, then there's always a friend, the family, and the fool. Right. If you really believe what you're doing, then you really gotta think carefully. Yes. You know, obviously, this gentleman's been very successful raising uh, venture capital. You know, I'm looking at business plans, which I've got a lot. Of, I think a lot of, uh, of the success of a startup is there a need in the marketplace for whatever product or service you're selling. Obviously, a lot of your success had to do with you were. Uh, starting a business in the healthcare industry, which to me is still in the Middle Ages as far as automation and technology. I just mentioned to a colleague of mine that I went to a doctor's office today to get a blood test, and they still got all of the, the client's files in, in folders like they did 30 years ago. So, What's his name? about what the healthcare industry is going to look like five years from now as far as technology and improvements and efficiencies from the way they're doing business today. Interesting. Um, and, and just before... I... No, Albert, I need a short answer because we're being kicked out here. We have a lot of... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So so five years from now, I think healthcare is going to be... Um, it, it's going to change very rapidly. Um, there'll be more technology in the mix. Uh, the government has put government incentives that are paying doctors to adopt technology. So I think it's going to move very quickly, but there's a certain amount of old technology that is being deployed as well. So it'll be more technological, but there'll still be stuff from the 1960s that is, is living inside doctor's offices that is, you know, fake cloud type of stuff. Thank you. You know, I, I, I really thank this panel because this, this wasn't boring at all, was it? <laughs>